job and she looked real pretty while she was doing it. I can say that if you're a guest because she's my wife. And I appreciate her. I love the song, wonderful song. And she didn't sing her voice, but she was strong and she did a good job. I appreciate it. So glad, glad you're in church on the week. This is awesome. Turn in God's word and look at John chapter number 12. John chapter number 12 in God's word this morning. And uh, while you're turning there, I read a little story for you. One Sunday morning, the pastor noticed little Alex standing in the lobby of the church and he was staring up at a large flag. It was covered with names with small American flags mounted on either side. The seven-year-old boy had been staring up at the plaque for some time, so the pastor walked up, stood beside the little boy, and said, Quiet, good morning, Alex. <clears throat> Finally, the little boy said, Pastor, what is this? The pastor said, Well, son, it's a memorial to all the young men and young women who died in the service. Soberly, they just stood there together, staring at the large flag. Finally, little Alex's voice, barely audible and trembling with fear, asked, Which service, 945 or 1045? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, we won't hold you that long this morning. <laughs> John chapter number 12. We're going to start reading verse number 32, John 12, and verse number 32 of God's Word. Would you please stand if you're able to? We like to do that just to show God's Word respect. And so if you're able to, John chapter number 12, and we're going to begin reading in verse 32 of God's Word. John 12, verse number 32. Looks like you're there. You're looking like you're there. You're there. Amen. Good. Good deal. Let's start reading. Jesus speaking here. He says, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. And it's talking about when he's lifted up from the earth, He's talking about what kind of type of a death. He's talking about him being nailed to the cross. He'd be lifted up from the earth. He knew he was going to die on the cross. Now today's the day we celebrate his resurrection. But you cannot have a resurrection unless you have a death. In the Bible here, speaking of Jesus' death, and Jesus made this promise. He said, if I'm lifted up from the earth, if I go to this cross, he said, I will draw all men unto me. I mean, the Lord would pray all the way, and I'm a little surprised, just to be honest with you, I, I probably would go a different route, but I just felt like the Lord kept going back to this verse, and it's true. And so for a little while, we're going to focus on this truth here, verse number 32. Would you do this for me, please? Would you read it out loud with me? Let's read this thing together. Here we go, verse number 32. Here we go. And I, if I be the earth, will draw all men unto me. We'll talk about that truth for a little bit this morning. Would you pray and ask God to speak to your heart? Well, I will preach on this truth for a while, and I'll ask the same. Let's pray together, would you please? Father, thank you so much for your word. Lord, it's, it's such an important Sunday. People all love are here. Lord, I, I wouldn't know what in the world to say, but we're for you. Thank you for it. Father, help me to write the divide. I'm going to preach it like you did for me, please. And then, Lord, I do ask that you would apply the truth to every single person here this morning. Father, Lord, the young folk, would you speak to them? Lord, the single folk, the older folk, folks, the widows, the widows, Lord, every person here, would you speak to their hearts, please? Give us what we need from your word today. And Father, we'll rather than what you do because we know what we need. That's it. Lord, would you draw a whole lot of people to you today? And we'll thank you, Lord, for what you do. And Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, so I believe you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Thank you so much, Andy. You may be seated. We're going to look really at three words from verse number 32. Just three words. And uh, you say, does that mean you say the three words we're going to bow our heads and pray and go eat? No, no. It'll take a little while longer than three words for pastor to talk about those three words. The first word, if you look back at that verse, verse number 32, I want you to see it. Let's read that verse again. You might read that loud if you'd not like to. But verse number 32, he says, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will, what's the next word right there? Draw. Draw. The first word we want to focus on this morning in God's word is this word, draw. Now I want you to imagine, if you will, Christ being on the cross. He was laid in the tomb. Third day he rose again. He's not there anymore. I want you to imagine. He said, look, if I'm lifted up, I will draw. That word draw there, it has to do with pulling on something. Trying to drag, if you will, something. And I want you to imagine Christ on the cross. He was on the cross for him. And he says, if I'm lifted up, I will draw all men, that's men and ladies alike, men unto me. Now, now listen, I want you to imagine right now Christ is drawing you. Every single person, and these, these uh, young men on the front row, Brother Warren, you're in a good section, you're considered a young man, amen, that's a good thing right there. <laughs> these young men, God's drawing These young men, God's drawing uh, oh, over here in this section over here, I see Wayne and Cat. I see him in the well. I see Cat. Go, go, go. God's rolling. Every single person. I want you to think about your neighbor. I, I want you to think about yourself in your life, in your situation. Jesus is rolling. That's what he said. If I lift it up, I will draw. Every single person here this morning, he's drawing you. He's pulling. He's tugging. It's a wonderful draw, by the way. It's a draw of love. It's a draw of mercy. It's a draw of compassion. It's a, it's a draw of concern about you as an individual. He's pulling. He's drawing you. Every single person here this morning, he's pulling. He's drawing you. Now you say, Pastor, why would he do that? Why would he go to the cross? And why would he draw all men into him? Well, one sounding reason comes right off the bat in my mind. First thing is because he is the only way you will ever go to heaven. Amen. No other way. Someone was arguing with the preacher one day. He said, well, preacher, man, the post office, is, there's a lot of different ways to, to the post office. I mean, you can, go, you can go Nissan Drive all the way down to Lowry Street. It's amazing, Lowry Street. It's got so many names. <laughs> Lowry, 4170, Broad, Murphy's Road. I mean, you name it. It's got all the names. That's the truth. And you go that way, or you go down Eden Springs, and, and there's a lot of and, and the preacher wisely said, well, friend, the only problem with that we're not talking about going to the post office. We're talking about going to heaven. Amen. There's only one way to heaven. That's right. If someone believes in God's word and they're not giving their opinion, like Brother Glenn did, I'm teaching you. <laughs> Don't get far And they're not going by their opinion. They're going by God's opinion. God says there's only one way. That's Jesus. Amen. See, there's this Bible verse. It's Acts 4, 12. It says this. It says, neither is there salvation in any other. Amen. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. Just Jesus. You might know this very popular verse that Jesus told that he said to them, I am the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. No man come above the Father but by Jesus. So why is this draw? Why does every person, you, why do you feel this draw in Jesus? Why do you feel this tug in your heart? Why? Well, first of all, because he doesn't want you to go to hell. 
And he's the only way you're going to have. He's the only way. Some people think, some people think, when they go to heaven, you know, everybody goes there and you're going to stand uh, before somebody and uh, and there's, you know, all the jokes about that. Every, I wasn't finding them, I got to tell you, you heard about the man that went there and um, uh, they were standing in front of Peter and Peter said, well, I should let you in. And the first time he said, well, my mother-in-law was going to lose her house and I, I paid her mortgage for her. He said, wow, lose up your mother-in-law, that's pretty good. How long ago was that dude? He said, that was 10 years ago. He said, well, I'll let you in. This is a my location, okay, it's a joke And the next friend, you know, he said, why should I let you in? And he said, well, there, there was somebody walking across the street, a little child, and Big old semi was coming down and they were going to make it a ball. So I jumped out, pushed them to safety, then ran over my ankle. I, I walked with the limp for the rest of my life. I don't know what that is, 15 years ago. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That fellow came up. He said, I should have He said, There's a little old lady. She's about to get mugged. There's about, about five, six, seven big old fellows all around, just me looking. I mean, and, 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 and they're about to mock. And I stepped in there and said, you're not going to touch that lady. Now you'll touch her with my dead body. He just said, wow, I'm going to touch with that. He said, how long ago was that? He said, oh, about 15 seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> now some people think when they get to heaven, there's these giant scales up there. You know, the ballots, like the justice system. You know, and, and, and over here is going to be all your good works, every good thing you ever did. You actually brushed your teeth, and your mom and dad told you to brush your teeth. And, you know, and, and all the good things. And over here is your bad things. And they kind of think, well, we'll see how it goes if you go to heaven or not. The friend of the Bible doesn't say that. It's an amazing verse. It says this in James 2 and verse number 10. It says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Wow. God's standard, his righteousness is so high, the Bible says nobody was ever good enough and could not do enough good works to get into heaven. Because, friend, even if I had a lot of good works, I still have a skin. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says the wages of sin, that's just one sin. The wages of sin, not sin, the wages of sin is death. And that death is eternal death and like a fire hell. You see, the only way anybody will go to heaven is not by being good enough. It's the only way is through Jesus. Amen. That's why Jesus said, I'll draw. He had drawn every person that doesn't matter. They're born in America or Nigeria or Mexico, wherever. It doesn't matter. He said, I'll draw. Oh. Huh. Well, he's going to go to heaven. He don't want to go to heaven. Every person has felt, has felt that draw from the Lord Jesus. Everyone. Why? Because he's the only way to heaven. Yeah. There's another reason I think of why. Why do you do this draw? Why does everybody have this draw? But because Christ made you. You see, he's the one that formed you. Several places in the Bible, John 1 being one of them, several places in the Bible says, hey, anything that was made, he's the one that made it. And he designed you to do something for him, to work for him. He, he has a plan, a purpose for your life. He has some things he would like to use you to do to help people and love people and to make this world a better place. And, and, and he draws you, even once you're saved, he still continues to draw you to him. And the closer you live to him, the more you see his plan, his purpose in your life. You see, a lot of people, they're going to live their life for many different reasons and many different plans. Some, and it's a sad thing, it's not their fault, but maybe they got a major wound in their life in the past. I think about someone you know, very dear to people, but uh, they grow up very poor, many times not have enough food to eat. And I don't 
don't know that it's to dominate anything in their life, but I, I know this, they pull them. They, they have to have three or four refrigerators in their house. Literally. And they have to have it full of food. Because the past woman has so dominated their life, they're trying to overcome this past woman. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. And there's people that will have different things that just drives them in their life. Some's about money. You know, the Bible says, the love of money is a root of all evil. And sometimes the more you get, the more you want. I learned the more you get, the more you spend. Anybody want to out there? <laughs> Amazing how that works. Some people have driving. Some people it's an education or a career. And that's the thing just dominant. And they spend their life trying to find the way. And that's a driving out of their life. Can I say this? If the driving thing in my life is all about things down here, it's very shallow. This is temporal things. This is 70, 80, 100 years at the best. You with me? Amen. And if all I'm living for is the things down here, life can be very shallow. It can be a little empty at the end of the day. But as I, I accept this pool is drawn, I get close to Jesus. And Jesus says, man, there's a there's more to life than down here. In fact, you'll kind of whisper in your heart, this is just the getting ready place that you will. Yeah. The big thing, you'll stand before me one day, and, 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 and whether as a lost person or a saved person, and even as a saved person, you'll get an account. Yeah. He says, I have a purpose for your life. And as I accept this role and I get closer, to him, and I, and I get to know him better, I, I begin to see his purpose in it brings so much more meaning to my life. Value to my life. Depth to my life. Purpose. He understands so often why you are what you are. It's not just for seven years, it counts for eternity. Someone said, only one life, so soon will pass. Only what's done for Christ will last. Amen. Friends, I accept this draw, and I, I, I get closer to Him, and it begins to heal, and begins to use and work through me. What adds so much meaning to life? And He starts to use you to help other people. Nothing like that all the world. I was a teenager, maybe 15 years old, I don't know, and, um, and I'm, let's see, I'm 35 now, right? <laughs> Pastor's life, I don't know, it's been over 30 years ago, right? and it was on a cassette tape, all right, that day, the other day. And it was on a cassette tape, and I heard this older preacher pray this before he even began preaching, and 30 years later, it still impacts my life. He's an old preacher, and, he, and he's praying. He said, well, oh, you just use me to help somebody. He said, that's what all there is to life with you. Not what I'd like to, I'd like for God to use me to help somebody. My wife knows when I used to work secular work, and I'd, I'd go and work in factories and all kinds of different places, and whatnot. She, she knows that the, the days that I went to work, and I felt like God used me to help somebody. Those are the days I come back and say, what's a good day? Ah, because I made some extra money? No, because God used you. When God uses you to help somebody, friend, it adds so much more to life. Amen. And that's why Jesus is drawing you. Every person, he's drawing, he's pulling you. Because, first of all, for salvation, you said, preacher, I've been saved. But beyond that, he has a plan, a purpose in your life. And the closer you get to him, the more he begins to live through you. And his meaning in life will come to become real to you. You'll feel that pull. Let me say something else about this draw. Our first word is draw. We're almost done. We're about to get to the second word, okay? All right. 
He said, now we got two more words to come. Wow. Yeah. Come on. Come on. But, uh, thank you, brother, whoever that was. But, uh, here's something else about this draw. He'll only draw so long. Talk about someone going to heaven and draw. The Bible says, and it is appointed unto man once to die. And after this is judgment. You see, once, once someone dies, the moment they stop breathing, boom, it's, the draw is done. The decision's made. This thing, I go to a print report, I have a chance for somebody to bring me out of that wall. That's not Bible for you. You'll never find that one time in the Bible. And, and once I take my last breath, the draw is done. And someone can say, no, Jesus, I, I, I don't need you. I, I found another way to have it. I'm going to go a different route. I'm going to try to get it. Whatever it may be. Once they say, no, 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 so long. And boom, the last thing your work happens. By the way, we don't know what that is. The Bible says, boast not thyself of tomorrow. For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And once that last day happens, you want to draw your It's done. It's over. Not only that, not only death can stop and draw, but, but even our rejection. And, and, and when God pulls and He draws through the Spirit of Christ and He's pulling on someone, and someone pulls the other way and they reject, they reject. That's what the Bible talks about the unpardonable sin. Is when they have said no, 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 no to the Spirit of Christ. He said, all right, I won't go anymore. It doesn't mean that Christ did not shed his blood for them. It doesn't mean that, that his blood is not powerful enough to overcome their sin. It simply means they'll never come to him because the draw will not happen again. They have blasphemed the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, and they said, no, 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 long enough. And God says, my spirit will not always strive with man. Is it all right? I'll give you your way. They will not be saved for you. Because we'll never have that draw again. See, He'll draw, but he'll come to a point where he says, all right. Now, can I say this? Even once someone has been saved, someone is a born-again Christian, they've received the gift of God. Nothing can change that. They're, they're a born-again Christian. They're on the way to heaven. But can I say this? A backslidden Christian, a backslidden Christian can reject that call so long that the Spirit of Christ will say, okay, You remember the children of Israel? God led them out of Egypt. And then across the Red Sea. How long out there? You know what I'm And across the wilderness. And they were about to enter into Canaan land through Kadesh Barnea. And, uh, and, and, and what happened? God wanted them to enter in, but they said, no, no, no. God said, all right. And God said, that generation right there. I'm not going to pull them to go in it anymore. In fact, it's a done deal. I'm going to give you your way. And God said, you'll wander in the wilderness for 40 years until that generation dies of a natural death. Okay. Hey, and that's the Christian. And there's a Bible verse. The Bible says, the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. And sometimes the morning of Christians can pull away that so long and God says, all right, I'll let you have your own way. Their own prosperity, their foolish lifestyle will destroy them. The Bible speaks of, in 1 John chapter number 5, the Bible speaks of a sin unto death. I read it for you. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that you shall pray for it. That's not talking about a lost person. We're talking to saved people. First John is all about saved people, the hand of God. And a saved person can say, no, 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 no. And God Almighty says, all right. They're not going to listen. I'm going to take them home early. 
and the many times when my son was a little boy and would not behave. Church sometimes. Some of you have been around our church for a while. You remember those days. And, and, um, and you know, John just wouldn't listen. And finally, me and Tammy would say, hey, boy, you come over here and sit with us. And then we misbehave, we twist his ear. <laughs> preachers are preachers about We don't do it by the ear because everybody sees that when we pinch him in the leg. You know? <laughs> but we say, hey, you come sit right by me. And there's a Christian that can sin, sin, sin. Now listen to the Spirit of God. And God says, all right. I'm going to bring up and sit by me. And God calls him to an early grave. The last funeral I was at, was in a funeral home in Smyrna, Tennessee, a, a, a old couple weeks ago. Some of the relatives of the people here in our church, and I was surprised at the preacher. I, I was pretty proud of him. He's bold. And, and he said, I'll be honest with you, I, I think this man was saved. In fact, I think that preacher had led him to the Lord. He said, I, 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 he, he told me, I believe he's saved. I believe he sinned unto death. He just went his whole way long enough. God says, all right, I'm taking him home early. The Spirit of God says, I won't draw you anymore. I'm just going to take you out of here. This draw from Jesus Christ only lasted one. Oh, but when it comes, it's a wonderful pull. If right now you are feeling the pull of Jesus Christ in your heart, that's a wonderful thing. That's because He loves you. That's because he wants you to spend eternity with him in heaven forever and ever. That's because he has plans for your life. Yeah. Swanical plans. Can I just say for every Christian, he, he, he wants you to get saved and get baptized and get the Bible to live in church and grow and begins to use you. That brings so much meaning to life. Amen. But yes, she didn't say, no, I don't want no more draw. There'll come a point. Alright. Help me out. Our first word was what? Was draw. Draw. Yeah. You got to stick with that southern accent. Draw. Okay. Draw. Here's a let's try it. Let's try it. Number one. The first word is draw. There you go. Draw. There you go. You got it. You got it. Let's get the second word. Alright. Because somebody's got some ham or somewhere. <laughs> and the Easter you have ham. Alright. Anybody have a ham in the oven? Good, we're going to these two houses right here. <laughs> we need to get their addresses. I know they will go over there. And, and let's get the second word. Let's get the second word, if you would. First word was roll. Let's go back over there, John 12. Look at verse number 32. John 12, verse number 32. Wow, was I that time? John 12, 32. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all. In unto, what's that last word? Amen. Jesus is drawing you to him. Amen. The transformation mankind needs is not found in education. <coughs> I'm not against education. My two children like to graduate from college. But for you can just educate an educated citizen. Yeah. Christ is the one that transforms life. The draw doesn't pull you to religion. In fact, religion is mentioned five times in the Bible. Five times you'll find the word religion. Only one of those times is mentioned positive. False religion will send more people to hell than anything in the world. Amen. Being a Baptist or a Church of Christ or a Catholic or whatever it may be will not take anybody to hell. It doesn't draw them to religion. It draws them to Jesus. I'll go all in unto me. Jesus is what the world needs for you. Amen. And didn't say I draw them to the preacher. Preachers are sinners too. Don't say me right there. <laughs> Though we are. You see, when you get to Jesus, you'll find rest there. Remember that verse from there, Matthew 11? He said, hey, he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Think about somebody that thinks they've got to work their way to heaven. 
If you got to work your way to heaven, you got to be good enough to get to heaven. My next question is, how good do you have to be? And once you figure out how good you have to be, if you're honest and sincere, my next question would be, are you that good? And if you're honest and sincere, the resounding answer will come back, no. And if I, if I got to be good enough to go to heaven, I'll always be working. I'll go to bed. Was I good enough today? I got mad at so and so today. I, I was in a hurry. I sped a lot today. I got thinking today. Whatever it may be. And, and, and you know, I have good days and bad days. You know, always, but am I good enough? But when you get to Jesus, and you say, I'm not my way to heaven. Jesus is my way to heaven. And you get to Jesus and say, there's rest there. I am saved. I'm born again. I'm going to heaven. I don't have to worry about that anymore. I can put my head on the pillow at night time and say, Whoa! If I were not to wake up down here, I'm going to wake up up there. I'm going to heaven. There's rest in Jesus. Not only that salvation, but even after you're saved. Sometimes us Christians are so busy doing everything else in the world. Sometimes good things, but we don't have time to get to Jesus. And we have no rest. We're like uh, Martha in the New Testament. We just comfort about so busy. And we're, 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 we're not a help to anybody. We don't have peace in our heart. And we can blame everybody else in the world. The preacher and our mates and our moms and our dads and our children. We blame everybody. The honest simple truth is we haven't gotten to Jesus for the rest that only he brings. Jesus can give you something nobody else can. He's called you everybody. And is drawing you to Jesus. Amen. Our first word was draw. Oh boy, quick now. Our second word is me. That's Jesus. Let's get our third word. We're going to go eat the hand. We're going to go to the rest of the Thompson's house. So let's look at this last word right here. John 12, verse number 32. Look back over there. John 12, verse number 32. Real quickly here. He says, And I, if I be lifted up, from the earth will draw all in and the upper word. It's it size of the verse. I. Jesus is drawing you to him, and it's Jesus that's doing the drawing. Amen. Now listen to me, hear me well. We don't have much time. I won't have time to cover very good, but listen very closely. I want you to think about these words. If someone is not close to Jesus, listen, it is Jesus that they are resisting. We want to blame everybody else, but if someone is not close to Jesus, they have to look at the fact that it's Jesus is wrong it, and Jesus has never made one mistake. Amen. They can't blame Jesus. Well, preacher, this happened. They made me go to church when I was a little boy. Brother so-and-so, the deacon of the church, did this, and they said say whatever. But the honest fact of the matter is they are resisting Jesus. Amen. Amen. According to God's words, the Bible says Jesus is the one that's drawing them. It may affect them. But friend, it's verb. Sin that's keeping them from Jesus. All the excuses in the world will not measure up when they stand before God and He says, My son is the one that was drawing you. And Jesus' eyes are the eyes of fire, and it'll sit through all the excuses and say, Friend, I never messed up one time, never sinned one time, and you resisted my poor. In our day and time, we want to justify, <laughs> manipulate. My friend, if they're not in Jesus, we want to do all we can to help. But the honest truth is, the bottom line is, they are resisting Jesus. Did you notice what he said? He said, I and I, they looked up, I will draw, what's the next two words? 
God lie? No. Oh, friend, I, I could take you down through the, the, the avenue of people that seen such horrible things. And, and God doesn't want this in the sin, cursed, sin, messed up with wicked, sinful men. But in the midst of all that tragedy of their life, they heard that voice. And they accepted it. If somebody's not living close to Jesus, they can blame everybody in the world. The honest truth is they are resisting that voice. <clears throat> They'll have to answer God for them. When he draws you, it's precious. The greatest days of my life have been the days that I felt the pull from Christ in a school. Days I remember, days that stick out in my mind, the most precious days of my life have been the days that I felt the pull so strong. Yes. I'm so grateful for them. Unfortunately, there's been days I don't feel the pull very much. More often than not, that's because I got so wrapped up in my world down here, I've not paid any attention to the draw. And God says, all right. I'll let you on for a little bit. Friend, the best thing you can do is when you feel that pull, you respond. You say, thank you, Lord. I need that. You get close to him. You get real close. You draw my eye to him. And here's the wonderful thing. The more I respond to that drawing from Christ, the more he draws. And the more I respond and say, thank you, Lord. I'm so thankful that, the more he draws. And the more I say, yes, Lord, I, I, I'm willing to make that change to get close to you, the more he draws. And the times that I'm feeling in the it doesn't bother me when I feel the draw from wonderful. It bothers me when I don't feel the draw in the Lord. It scares me. And those are the days I have to go to all the world. I'm not going to listen to your Draw. Would you come back and draw me again? He's merciful. His mercy endureth forever. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes, please? Our heads are not bad to close. You're there this morning, you said, Preacher, I feel that draw even now this morning. I want to get closer. I want to respond and say, Thank you, Lord, and I want to get closer to Jesus. I feel that draw in my heart, my life this morning, not for in my heart. I feel that draw. If that's you, they have to buy a nice pool. Did you lift your hand? Lift it up. I feel that draw. I feel that draw. Many, many hands. Many, many hands. Christians and lost everyone. About everyone. I feel that draw. That's you. Lift your hand. God bless you. Many, many, many hands. Thank you. Thank you so much. What a wonderful thing. God's draw. It's a great thing. Thank you so much. You put your hands down. My advice would be respond. Thank you, Lord. I need that. I want that. I like that. Now I want to get closer to him. I got to make a change out for whatever. I just want to get closer to him. Would you tell him that this morning? Our heads are about our eyes and closed. You said, Preacher, the honest truth is, I don't feel that wrong. I know what you're talking about. I've felt it before. I don't feel it anymore. I'm a cold hearted. I hate to admit it. That's not a good although for all of us get there from time to time. Preacher Thomas, I, I just don't feel that cool right now. That girl, I don't feel it in my heart. I'm just being honest about it. I don't feel it right now. If that's you, would you just look your hand up? Preacher, that's me. Just look it up. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm there. We're all going to like to be. That's a good thing. You're just honest about it. That's where it all starts right there. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? Preacher, right now, I don't feel that cool. I don't feel that raw. Anybody else? Just lift it up. God bless you. Several, many, many hands this morning. Thank you. Put it down. Could I give you just, just a, 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 a touch of a, a, a advice? Go to him and say, Lord, I don't feel cool right now. But I'm going to hang around. I'm not going to run away from you. And I'm asking you to bring your pool and give the draw of you. I need that. Would you tenderize my heart? 
sitting back on fire. I want to feel that cold. He'll, he'll do it. He'll do it. He's compassionate. He's merciful. He does it for all of us. If you stay on fire for a little very long. Two more questions were done. You said, preacher, there was a time in my life when I accepted the call of salvation. Now I felt the pull. I knew I needed Jesus. He's all the way to heaven. And I accepted Jesus as my only way. Preacher, I have been saved. I know that I've settled that. I felt the pull, and there was a time, a moment, when I said, Yes, Jesus, you're going to have to wait. Would you say me, preacher? I didn't say before. If that's you this morning, you said, Be in a preacher, that's me, and that's me. Just slip it up. Many, many hands. Many, many hands. Many, many hands. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Put your hands down. God bless you. Thank you for being honest about it. Some did not raise your hands. And I appreciate you being honest about it. God loves you. And right now you're feeling that pull, that draw from Jesus. It's a draw of love. He wants you to be with him in heaven forever and ever and ever. Right now you're sick. I, I feel that pull, that draw, but I've never accepted salvation from Jesus. Now I don't know that I've said that. Right there, you see, you say, I admit it, I know I'm a sinner. Now I understand, I understand. There's a penalty. I've got sin, there's a penalty. But Jesus is no way. Right there, we are set. If you want to say yes to Jesus and that drawing, that pulling right now, would you whisper a prayer in your heart? Right there, you said, would you whisper a prayer to Jesus? Thank you for drawing me. I realize you're on the way to heaven. And right now, I say yes to your pull. I come to you, Jesus, would you save me? Would you give me a home in heaven for all eternity? Thank you, Jesus, for dying and raising and for drawing me. In Jesus' name, amen. Our heads are still bowed, our eyes are closed. Pretty sure I never have, but I just accepted that role. I just asked Jesus to save you. Never have before, but I just came to Jesus and asked you to save me. If that's you with our heads bowed, my eyes closed, pretty sure I just, I just accepted that role, that role, and asked Jesus to save me. If that's you, just lift your head there. Just lift it up right there. Yeah, God bless you. God bless you. Not anybody else, pretty sure just prayed that a minute in my heart. Never have, just prayed that a minute that in my heart. And she just to say, anybody else, just look ahead. You slip it up. In just a moment, we're going to stand. All of us will stand. I'm going to have a word of prayer once we stand. As soon as I say amen at the end of that prayer, we'll sing the invitation. It's on page 293. It's Jesus' table. As soon as I say amen, the instruments will play and we'll start singing. At that moment, as soon as we say amen, you say, I've been saved, but I feel that pull. I need to get close to Jesus. Would you come to all night in an old-fashioned altar? You say, I raised my hand. I feel that pull, but I like to fill it again. Would you come to an old-fashioned altar? Let him know that Lord, I need to fill it again. If you pray and ask Jesus to be your Savior, would you come to that moment also? There'll be some men standing in front of the auditorium, in front of each aisle. Would you come to shake their hand? And they'll explain a bit more about that gift you received from Jesus, heaven. Then I'll be understanding to later to get a lady. But would you come? Let's all stand if you with me. Let's all stand. And have a word of prayer. So you can say amen if you come. And get close to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You went to the cross. You drew us. Your resurrection, you, you draw all men. Thank you for that, Lord. Father, help those that are saved and need of their salvation with distance. Let them come get close. Those that are just a little weary, let them control out of you. Those that don't feel the force, let them come draw out of you. And those that could not raise their hand, know for sure they're going to have when they come and get some information, some help in that. Father, we'll thank you, rejoice at what you do here in invitation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you come and God spoke to Would you come? That's right, don't wait for anybody else, but you come. Our piano is playing, but you come. Great time, draw nine in here for the invitation. Feel that draw, but you come, just draw nine in here.
I'm going to get baptized. Now's the time. I'm going to get baptized. So we're coming. Getting in the church is a step. Reading your Bible is a step. Prayer is all. And he'll lead you down the path closer and closer and closer to him. Getting rid of bitterness. So many. And he is so wise in his leadership as he grows. Would you say yes to the step that he's calling you to? Would you say yes? Would you sing another verse of me and ask me to do? I guess to that next step of the Lord. Uh, we, we had this problem a couple weeks ago. We thought we had to solve it. We have another cold 
baptistry. Uh, and she's going to come. She said, I can have it. I've been cold before. I don't want to do the cold before she gets in this cold water, amen? And uh, so this is Nora Deskins. And uh, I come to talk to her this morning. She, she knows she's saved. It's the time her mom talked to her about salvation. And uh, she wants to grow the Lord. She probably won't believe in baptism. A wonderful thing. And uh, praise the Lord for it. And so uh, uh, I, I'm going to ask her just one question when she gets in the water. If she just because it's freezing, all right? <laughs> she wants to do a praise the Lord for it. I apologize. You ready? I just asked if she knows for sure she's safe. She said yes. She knows a specific time she did. And so, in obedience to the command of our Lord and Master, and upon your public profession of faith in Him, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Bury the light of the Son's day. Praise in the light of the Son's day. proud of her for getting that time. <laughs> so let's stand if you would please. Don't forget the egg hunt out front here. Uh, newborns, the three-year-olds, in the back, back here, behind the office in the field, over on the left, the younger one, second grade down, over on the right, third, sixth grade. Thank you for being here on Easter Sunday. Let's just revel in our risen Savior. Amen. Amen. Great, great, great. Good to have you here. Praise the Lord. Brother Bush, would you dismiss this and work for a